Hello friends, family, and any other random person that found this video on the internet. I'm Rachel, and today I'm going to be telling you about every single book that I've read this year. I'm just going to do a recap of the titles of every book that I've read, just so we know what we're working with when I end up giving the awards out. Did I mention that this is an award ceremony? Wait, <clears throat> let me do this one more time then. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all other amazing human beings that have stumbled upon this video on the internet. I am Rachel and today we are giving out awards for Rachel's Reads of 2022. <laughs> Woo! It's an honor being here today on your screen, on your laptop, on your phone, on your iPad, on your television screen, wherever you're watching this tonight, get ready for some amazing talented writers to be awarded awards by me now let's let's uh let's present the nominees so basically here's every single book that i read this year i read 12 books this year that was my goal i made my goal so how about a round of applause for reaching our reading goal this year thank you thank you oh wow i appreciate this so much should i keep going with this bit or should i stop i feel like it's kind of fun i'm gonna kind of keep going with it if you don't like it whatever all right, nominee number one is Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. This was my January read. And as I mentioned in my eight month book talk review, this is all over book talk. And I picked up a lot of these books because of book talk. So how about a shout out to book talk and booktube for all these recommendations. Oh wow, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Book number two is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This was my February read. Book number three, Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mass. Moss? Mass Moss, I never know how to say the last name. This was my March read. Book number four, They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. This was my April read. Book number five, The Cool, The Cool, I mean, The Cool, why do I keep saying cool? The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This was my May read. Book number six, Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. This was my June read. Book number seven, In Five Years by Rebecca Searle. This was my July read. Book number eight, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. This was my August read. Book number nine, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This was my September read. Book number 10, Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. This was my October read. Book number 11, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This was my November read. And last but certainly not least, we have Wherever You Go, There You Are by John Cabot Zinn. This was my December read, number 12. As you can see, we have a wide range of genres here, and I'm not gonna rank all 12, but I will be giving you my top five reads of the year. So all time reads, no matter the genre, that will be the uh, final prize, and we'll see who number one is. I wonder who it's gonna be. So here are the awards that we are going to be giving out. Most shocking ending, most spicy, most tears shed by myself, most likable characters, most suspenseful read, best world building, most beautifully written, series I'm most likely to finish, most valuable lesson, and then top five reads of the whole year, ending with favorite read of the year. So those are all the awards being given out today. They may not be in order, so let's start with the first award that I wanna give out. All right, award number one is going to be the book that made me shed the most tears. Now, I will say that majority of these books made me cry at at least one point. Not all of them, but most of them. Nominee number one, Ugly Love. Nominee number two, Song of Achilles. And nominee number three, It Ends With Us. All these books made me cry a significant amount, some more than others. I gotta be honest, like, the emotional connection that you make with characters in books is so, it's so strange to think that I'm sitting there reading words on a page in my room and I'm able to sob, and I mean sob uncontrollably, and I'm trying to decide right now if I want to make this a spoiler-free award or if I want to, like, say why it's won. I think because I want to recommend these to people, I'm not going to be spoiled. This is a spoiler-free award show! Okay, and the book that made me cry the most this year is... Oh... 
they're so close. They're so close in terms of amount of tears shed, but I think I'm gonna have to go with It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. This, without any spoilers, this is a very emotional book. It's a read, you, as you're reading, you're frustrated. As you're reading, you don't understand. As you're reading, you're given all the facts, but for some reason you still don't get why characters make certain decisions. And that's what makes this hard. I think the part that really, really made me sob was at the point where it says, it ends with us because not only does it help you understand why it's called this, but it's a great moment. And that is the best way I can describe this without any spoilers. The next award is Most Valuable Lesson Learned. They both die at the end. Wherever you go, there you are. And The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I feel like every book that I read does allow me to take away something and learn like a life lesson within it. All books are embedded with lessons and experiences that we as the reader get to understand and interpret within our own lives afterwards, which I think is so awesome. And as much as fictional books really do have lessons that you can learn and take away from the characters, this one's gotta go to my man, John Kabat-Zinn. I actually took a master class with him. That master class got me into mindfulness and meditation. So this book, I feel like, was almost an extension of the master class. And since I found that master class extremely valuable in shaping the way that I live my everyday life, I was so curious to read this. Okay, here are the nominees for most suspenseful read. We've got A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, Good Girl Bad Blood, and Throne of Glass. So this is a murder mystery series, and this here is a fantasy book. And I found um, all three of these really did keep me at the edge of my seat. More so these two. This one at the very end had this big something, and it was really suspenseful. But with that being said, the top two, I mean, they go together. They go hand in hand. And I'd just like to do maybe a double word right now. These win most suspenseful reads and series I'm most likely to finish. I cannot wait for As Good As Dead, which is the third book within this series, and I love it. I mean, this is a young adult book. It's not like, um, there's no spice, you know, there's no like graphic murder, but I feel like for the solving the mystery, you really feel like you are figuring it out, even though you're watching the main character figure it out. So I feel like that's what makes these great. I just want to see some honorable mentions. Both Throne of Glass and Cruel Prince were up for series I'm most likely to finish, but I found that fantasy series are a lot harder to finish. One, because there are so many books. I believe there's like seven books within this series. That's a lot. And this one here, I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong, I really liked it. But compared to this series, I'd rather finish this over this. For all we know, I might be finishing this series as well, but it went to the books here. All right. Next are the nominees for most shocking ending or biggest twist. I feel like those two kind of go hand in hand, like a shocking ending typically is due to a twist. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, and they both die at the end. All three of these books had an ending that made my jaw hit the floor or go or gasp. I'm reading this and every other page I'm like <gasps> gasping, gasping, no way! <sighs> What? I think the winner is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I really do love this series, and now that I'm realizing how many awards it's getting within my 12 books, congrats to Holly Jackson for just knowing how to make me turn the page. And I like the second book too. Don't get me wrong, I thought that it had a good ending as well. But there was something about this first book that was so like, it was my first time reading this type of story. And I, I'll never forget what it was like to finish the book and be like, oh my gosh, I cannot wait for the next one because if this one ended like this, I can't wait to see if the others are like it. And they are. Let's check this off my list. The books for best world building. The nominees are Throne of Glass, The Cruel Prince, and The Song of Achilles. All three of these did a great job of building a world. And I'm really proud of the writers for being able to come up with a brand new space that isn't our own. To write within the real world is one thing, to write within a world that you've made on your own takes so much more work. 
you know what? I'm gonna go Throne of Glass. I think if you go into this knowing that this is book one of eight and you recognize that this is the setup for all the world building to happen, I think that you will appreciate every little detail that they're sharing about the magical and the non-magical parts of it. All right, now we're gonna do spiciest read. Now, I didn't read very, very spicy books, um, but of the books that I read, there were some with spice. And those were Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover, and Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. If I had to say which one was the most, like, I feel weird reading this in public because I'm like, oh, this is a lot, uh, very descriptive, hopefully no one's reading this over my shoulder, uh, <laughs> I think I'd have to go with one of the Colleen Hoover books. I think I'm gonna go with Ugly Love on this. I felt inappropriate reading this next, like in my grandma's house, you know what I mean? So these are the nominees for most likable characters. We've got The Seven Husbands of Evan Hugo, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, and Every Summer After. I'm just going to right away say that Every Summer After had the most likable characters in my opinion. I loved Persephone or Percy, and I loved Sam and Charlie, and even though they had their flaws, they were just characters that you wanted the best for because you liked them. And maybe I'm also biased because I really like Carly as a person. I've had the pleasure of meeting her and chatting with her. I saw a lot of Carly within Persephone, which was really awesome to see. The second last category before we go into the top five books of the year is the most beautifully written book. All right, the top three are The Song of Achilles, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, and It Ends With Us. All three were really beautifully written in my opinion, and they all had different ways of sharing complex stories. But the winner ultimately has to go to The Song of Achilles. It truly does like take my breath away with how certain details are just shaped so beautifully. I love the way this book was written. That's all I can say. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and any other random person that has stumbled upon this video on the internet, I hope that you are ready for my top five books of 2022. In fifth place, we have It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I heard so much about this book, and honestly, I was worried that it wasn't going to live up to the hype, and I thought it did. I thought that the writing was great, I thought that the characters were interesting to understand. I thought the twists within the book were really great um, and shocking and it really was a page turner. So congratulations to Enter Us by Colin Hoover for 5th place overall. And in 4th place we have Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. This book was really like a really special read for me, I think just knowing that it's not only based within an area that I recognize but the characters being super likable, the plot being very like jumping from the past to the present was really interesting in terms of like wanting to move forward within the book. I love when books do past and present time jumps because it doesn't give you the full story right away and you kind of need to go back and forth to understand why characters are acting certain ways instead of like, here's the past, stop here's what's happening now, stop. Like, it was just really well written, so congratulations to Every Summer After for fourth place. And in third place we have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This book won many awards during this show, so obviously it's within my top five. It really helped me be reminded that I like murder mystery books and I like figuring things out and as I'm reading certain chapters, I'm like, is that detail that was mentioned important or is it just a detail for the sake of it being a detail? You know, it had me really like paying attention to the interactions and the relationships between the characters and especially more within the second book and knowing that there's a third book Book, I'm gonna be paying close close attention to see if I can figure it out before the narrator does which is kind of like a fun game to play I'm happy to say it's in third place Okay. and in second place the song of Achilles by Madeline Miller it won most beautifully written book of the year so obviously it's in my top five again this story it made me cry it made me hopeful it made me see love in a different way it made me see the history in a different way and i i truly believe that everyone should read this book i want to read these top five books for sure but this one in particular i would recommend to anyone not only because i think it's incredible but because i think it's a good story for everyone to know and if you know then you know and we were at that time of night or day or whenever you're watching this video where we are announcing the biggest award which is my favorite read of the entire 
year. Now, you may know this already if you follow me on Instagram because I said this might be my favorite read of the year. And I was right by saying that it is my favorite read of the year. So the winner, first place for favorite read of 2022 is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book was so good. It was one of those books that as soon as I picked it up, I was like, I can't believe that I pushed this to be my November read. I bought this book earlier in the year and I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll, I'll read it later, I'll read it later. I wish that I read this sooner because it was so delicious. Um, the characters were flawed in a way that still made you appreciate them and feel like you really understood them. You under, you just understood the characters so well. You understood the time in which they were living so well, why things needed to be done, and even if they were bad at some points per se, you still liked them, which I thought was so interesting. So congratulations to The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. You are in first place for my favorite read of 2022. Amazing. No, no. And that brings us to the end of our award show and our video. Thank you so much for watching and listening to me share my rankings of the books that I've read this year. These 12 books have really impacted me. Each book I took away something special, whether it's a life lesson, uh, the way that they word certain things, the way that they understand certain concepts in life. It really is a great experience to read and I cannot wait to see what I read next year. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.